Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Mark Rick Show, brought to you by Williamson Automotive. Joe Zagacki alongside Don Bailey Jr. and University of Miami head coach Mark Rick will join us momentarily. Canes are coming off a huge win last Thursday, Don, against North Carolina. It was defense, defense, and a little more defense. That it was, Joe. Imagine three touchdowns scored by the Miami defense. Once again, Manny Diaz had his guys ready to go, a bunch of tackles for loss, and just an overall great performance by Miami's defense. 14 tackles for losses in the game. What does that do to the opponent's offense when you're getting so many negative plays? It starts frustrating everybody. It frustrates the offensive line. It frustrates the running backs. And then you also know that it's going to lead to a very difficult pass game because you're getting penetration already on the run game. You know you can get there in the pass as well. Nikozi Perry, easy night for him. He only had to throw 12 passes. Uh, but it looked like he operated the offense the way Coach Rick wanted. You know, Joe, he's so efficient. I think that uh, the thing that we're starting to find out about Nikosi Perry is he's got a very, very good arm. I think he can make every single throw. He can gauge any pass that he, that he tosses. But the thing that's impressive about him is he's composed the whole ball game. Uh, DJ Dallas gives Miami another 100 yards. Canes ran for over 200 yards and some physical running by Dallas and Homer. I think that Homer is influencing DJ Dallas on the physical side. You know, DJ doesn't need any encouragement to be great. He, he's a, a talented player, but Travis Homer is, is such a brutal runner, and you don't expect it from his size, but he just, he's downhill, he's hard, he's aggressive, and you're starting to see DJ kind of pick up that personality trait. And running behind an offensive line, that looks like it's starting to gel and come together. It is, Joe. I think that you've got a right tackle now that's understanding what it takes to play that position. The same thing at the left tackle spot. But you look at the yardage, and the yardage tells a lot. Miami's got over 200 yards rushing the last three games. They're over five yards a carry. They are very, very productive in the running game, and that means that this group is coming together, and Stacey Searles is doing a great job. I know a lot of people have talked about the Hurricanes doing well on third downs, both sides of the ball, defensively. Absolutely incredible. Again, I think Carolina was two for 17. Uh, offensively, Miami's doing a nice job in the red zone. They are, and they've worked on that since day one of camp. It's something actually they picked up on last spring, came out of last season. They weren't happy with that. And one, one reason they've been successful is they got a fullback, right? Trayon Gray uh, came to Miami uh, out of Carroll City High School. He was a quarterback. They tried him at, at the tailback spot. Now he's a fullback, and he's legitimate. He's doing a good job providing movement on the, in the short yardage, but he scored some touchdowns too. It is Florida State week, and we will talk about the Canes and the Seminoles with head coach Mark Rick. That's coming up. But first, one more look back. Our highlights of Miami, North Carolina, brought to you by Williamson Automotive. Welcome inside our show as we continue on with University of Miami head coach Mark Rick and the Mark Rick Show brought to you by Williamson Automotive, Joe Zagacki alongside Don Bailey Jr. Hurricanes head coach Mark Rick. It is Florida State Week, Miami and FSU, Saturday at 3.30 at Hard Rock Stadium. I've already got the bungee cord around Don. We're all set for that, but uh, first coach, let's uh, take a look back at Thursday night. Big night at Hard Rock Stadium and a, and a big win for your team. It was a big win. It was a big crowd. The cane walk was, was huge. The students were there. The, of course, the band's always there and the cheerleaders and all that. But uh, just a great atmosphere that we had. We appreciate it so much. And 
I know on a Thursday night, it was probably so tough to get to that game. I know we we had a hard time with traffic. We had a police escort, so uh, it took us probably 10 or 15 minutes longer than normal to get there. But uh, it was – the guys were ready to play. You know, short week, I give them credit. I give the coach and staff credit. Uh, everybody was grinding. Everybody was working late. Everybody was doing what they had to do. I mean – you know, the game before, as soon as it was over, that Saturday evening, we're watching film on, on the next opponent just to try to have a quality Sunday practice. And, uh, you know, in the end, it worked out great. You know, uh, the fast turnaround is hard for everybody, but once it was over and we won, then we had a little bit of a break. Uh, so that was nice for the players and the staff. Coach, you know, we jump right on the offense and how they did, but the defense was just unbelievable with the takeaways and the yeah, scoring. De and defense had the offense, man. Yeah, they did. But, uh, yeah, defense was very offensive. But uh, they, uh, you know, early on we were, you know, we struggled a little bit with the run. They popped a few runs. And, they, you know, they're a good football team. And you know, that was bothersome. But in the end, it was, a, it was all about the turnovers. Uh, six turnovers, as you mentioned, three of them for scores, touchdowns. One set up that field goal right there at the very end of the half. And, um, you know, just I don't know what to say other than it's a whole lot of fun and it sure is, it takes the drama out of the game when you do that. The only, one of the bad things uh, that happened offensively was we only, we only got to run 46 plays. One of them we took a knee and uh, I can't remember a game under 50 uh, at all as far as number of plays, but when you score on defense, you got to go play again, you know. You score and they kick off to you and you're back playing defense, but um, you know, overall it was a great game by everybody. First half I thought was just super cleanly played by both sides of the ball other than the, the blocked extra point, which we know could be crucial in a game uh, that we're about to have. It happened two years ago, so um, we got to get that straightened out, but other than that, Special teams played well as, as well. Okay, it's Miami and Florida State, and we'll talk about the Caves and the Seminoles when we come back on the Mark Rick Show right after this. Happy to welcome you back to the Mark Rick Show, brought to you by Williamson Automotive, Joe Zagacki, Don Bailey Jr., University of Miami head coach Mark Rick, and on Saturday, Miami and Florida State. 3.30 at Hard Rock Stadium. Well, you've been on both sides of this one. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's always it's, great. It's unreal. It, it's mostly, it's been great for a lot of reasons. There's been some times when we know that the winner of that game is going to play for the national championship. And, uh, you know, we'll get back to that, I'm sure, before long. But, but it's also so much about just the – the hometown pride, uh, you know, or guys that played at the same high school, guys that got recruited together, you know, went on recruiting vis visits together. I mean, they, these guys know each other. And, uh, you know, there, there's a lot at stake because it's an ACC game, but there's also a lot of pride at stake too. Coach, what do you think is the best part of this game? Is it the week coming up to it? I'm not necessarily talking about on the field, but I'm just the overall ambiance I, I of this game. I think everything. I mean, even – you know, we had our little practice like we do on Sunday evenings, and you, you could see it. You know, the guys are excited about it, and I'm sure there are guys are too, and the fans start getting revved up. And, you know, you just never know what's going to happen during the week, but you also know when the weekend comes, everybody's going to be there. Everybody's going to be there early. Everybody's going to be ready. I'm talking about the fans uh, and the players, so uh, we're looking forward to it. Someone's going to write the history book, and they're going to get a – a lot of chapters from you because you were a player in the game and you were a coach in the game for Florida State and of course coach in the game for the University of Miami right so you've got all angles covered and right what do you think uh is there anything out there that stood out over the last couple of years the last couple well, well I guess maybe know, going back when you were yeah I mean the last couple obviously you know losing six in a row and then seven in a row and then you know finally breaking that jinx or whatever you want to call it, you know, get that elephant off your back. It didn't matter how it happened. But, you know, I, I knew that it was probably going to take something spectacular to change the course of history. And we did have that spectacular play, you know, from Malik to, to Langham. And, and then we had to sit there and wait for, felt like an hour to decide if it was a touchdown or not. But, um, you know, sometimes you got to make that 
spectacular play at that, at that very moment that you needed the most. And, and you know, I, I don't doubt that this game's going to come down to the wire. I mean, the rival games do. It, it, there's something about them that doesn't matter what anybody's done before that time and what they did a year ago. It's, it's a game into itself. It's a war into itself. And both teams will be revved up, ready to go. Well, that gets us to uh, this weekend's game. And Don and I were talking about earlier, and I, I guess I mean this, you know, just uh, scheme-wise. I said, Don, are we playing Florida State or are we playing Pittsburgh and Michigan State? Because their their defense looks a little different. Yeah, they are. They they are doing a lot of the uh, things that the coaches that have come out of that Michigan State defensive tree, or however you want to call it, um, they look very much like uh, what Pitt has done defensively. Uh, in a lot of ways, and there's some other things that they do that, that you know aren't quite the same, but but it, it is a little bit different. And uh, from what they were doing, offensively, it's different than what they were doing. So you got a bunch of really talented players with with very good coaches, but they're they're learning to the coaches are learning what the players are capable of, and the players are learning exactly how the coach wants things done. Things done, and and then they have a big win, you know, comeback victory, and and they start seeing, hey, this is how it can work. And so, you know, I'm sure they're gaining confidence as they go. And it's hard that first year to get everything implemented and get it done the way you want it. It's hard to even expect that kind of execution, but they're getting there. Their quarterback, Francois, is from the 16 game here. I was just impressed with him and his physical toughness and what he endured in that game. And just he would not yeah. go away. <laughs> he, he's a great player, you know. Uh, and he's great because he, you know, he can throw the ball, he can run, he can do all those things. But you, you mentioned his toughness and the toughness of a quarterback. Um, it resonates with everybody. Everybody sees that guy laying it on the line and that guy taking shots and getting up and throwing another strike and trusting his protection the next time around. And then, you know, everything's perfect. Then the next play, he gets banged again and. He, you know, he 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 was the re, he was the main reason why they they hung in there and won that game. It was very evident. And uh, there's a lot of other things that went well, but he was the key to victory, in my opinion. And he's a, he's a tough one to beat. Coach Fernicosi being his first start Florida State game. Is there any father son conversation you have about playing? No, just you got to focus on your job. I mean, you got to focus on your assignments. You focus on your reads, your progressions, you know, your protections. Just there's so much to think about every single snap to make it go the way it should go. That'll be plenty to think about. Uh, on the other side, they got a couple of running backs that Akers and Patrick that can get it going. You don't want them to, let it, to get it going, but Akers can really fly. Yeah. I think the key to that is, you know, get them, get them stopped before they get started. If you give them a little bit of head of steam and a little bit of space and, uh, you know, they, they've got the speed and power to, uh, to run through people and run by people and um, they're great backs. I mean, it's, it's, make no mistake, they are very, very talented team and highly motivated and well coached. So it's going to be, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. The Hurricane fans can make a difference this weekend. Please. <laughs> Please they, make a difference. And they, they, they will. They will make a difference. There's no doubt. I mean, you know, I say it all the time, but you get a team to jump off sides one time. Let's say it's third and one. And, you know, they're, they've had two first downs and they're getting ready to get in field goal range. They're on the 37 yard line going in. It's third and one, and they're getting ready to hammer it. You know, for that first down, and then, then bang, you you jump off sides, and now it's third and six. And say, oh, we decide to throw it, and then we it's incomplete, or it's a pick, you know, or you know we you know get a sack, and then all of a sudden they're out of field goal range. I mean, just one time, get them to jump off sides with the, with the crowd noise, and and I'm sure it'll be we'll get that, we'll get at least one, and maybe more. And the other thing too is, you know. When the momentum's going in the right direction and the crowd's, you know, obviously a big part of that, it, it just makes the, the team that's visiting thinking they're outnumbered maybe a little bit more than they are. And uh, so it's, it's going to be huge. And it also adds energy to our team. When we walk through that cane walk, that adds energy. When we look up there and the student section's going crazy, that adds energy to the team. And, 
And when something good ha good's happening and the crowd e explodes, that adds energy to everybody. And uh, you know, without our fans, it's just it's just not fun. All right, very good. Well, it's gonna be a great week, Coach. Thank you, and uh, yeah. best of luck against those Seminoles. All right, thank you. All right, that's uh, University of Miami head coach Mark Rick. Don and I will continue with the Mark Rick Show right after this. Friends, welcome back to the Mark Rick Show, brought to you by Williamson Automotive, Joe Zagacki and Don Bailey Jr. It's Miami and Florida State on Saturday at 3.30 at Hard Rock Stadium. I know you love this week. Yeah, there's nothing better than Miami, Florida State. I think it's great for the, for the state. It's great for both teams. It's great for all the players. It's great for the families. The energy that you get, whether you're at Doe Campbell Stadium and now at the Hard Rock, the Hard Rock will produce more energy than anybody. It's just a great game to go to. Seminoles are coming off a hard earned win at Louisville. Maybe one of those games that it uh, changed the course of their season. A late win needed all hands on deck and they got it. You know, Joe, I think you're right about that. I think that the way that they beat Louisville at the end, they needed an interception, they got it. They needed a long drive and some big plays, they got it. Now it seems like it might be starting to come together for Coach Taggart in Florida State. Well, they got to come to the Hard Rock. They got to play Miami and Miami's starting to roll too. And no matter what the records are, no matter who the faces are, no matter what the positions are, and doesn't matter who's starting at quarterback, it's Miami, Florida State, and that is always a big game. Well, speaking of who's starting at quarterback, Coach Rick told us on the show here, it's Nikozi Perry, so it will be his first start against Florida State. And I hope that it doesn't, he doesn't have to do anything but be the quarterback. It, I, don't, I believe for Miami to have great success, it can't fall on Nikosi Perry's shoulders. You've got to have a great running game. Your defense has got to play at the level it's played at all season long. You've got to have receivers make the catches and the runners make the runs and let him just manage this football game. Florida State playing a little different style of defense than under the day than the days under Mickey Andrews. Yeah, well, for, the athletes haven't changed much. There's a ton of athletes on the defensive side of the football for Florida State, but. They bring pressure and stunts and blitzes from anywhere and everywhere the entire game. So you're, if you're Miami's offense, you have to be in tune on who the middle linebacker is. You have to know the down and distance and what to expect. And it's gonna be, it's gonna be a very big challenge for Miami's offense because of the type of defensive scheme Florida State plays. They play, I think, all 11 guys within about eight yards of the line of scrimmage. And you never, you never know which guys are coming. I mean, they, they twist it. It's all based uh, usually on formation, and they, they bring them from every direction, and they throw uh, risk to the wind, so to speak. They'll give up the big play because they think they're going to hit your quarterback. Uh, the challenge for the Miami defense in this one is, getting, is going to be getting lined up and getting Francois on the ground and stopping the run. This is a hurry-up high tempo, no huddle offense. Yeah, and DeAndre Francois in 2016 impressed me as much as anybody. He's a tough cat. Now you can hit him all day long, he will not go down. So it's gonna take a 60 minute contest for the Miami's defense, but I got confidence in Manny Diaz. He's done such a great job since he's been here and he, he more than anybody understands this game. All right, 3.30 kickoff for Miami and Florida State, 1.30 Kane Walk outside of Hard Rock Stadium. Looking for all the Hurricane fans to be there. Should be another great one for Don Bailey Jr. and University of Miami head coach Mark Rick. I'm Joe Zagacki. We'll see you next time right here on the Mark Rick Show.